we got fire. Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Ty. I work at Resilient Community Arts. I'm here with Carrie Hume and we're going to be working on a craft today. Carrie, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and then what we're going to be doing today. Hi, my name is Carrie and I love upcycling things. So anything that some people would rather throw in the garbage, I like to find another use for them. So today I'm going to be showing you how to create your own little lantern using an old jar. You can buy them from the store too if you don't have any, but you can save your old jam, jelly jars, salsa jars, whatever. Clean it out really well. And we're going to use some alcohol ix and need a lighter because we're going to light it on fire, which could be a lot of fun. And you can use a little battery operated tea light. And then when you're done, it will look something like this. Ooh. Uh -huh. So if it doesn't look exactly like that, I'm going to want my money back. <laughs> if yours doesn't look like that, send all of your hate comments to Carrie. Or send send your products to me and then I can, you know, have some free <laughs> Yeah, and then you can just upcycle them. That's perfect. I love it. But you know, the really cool thing about these two is that they look actually sometimes even better when you don't have a candle in them. Oh. Yeah. For sure. I mean, I plan on using mine as like a pencil holder, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah, and even like just in front of the window, like it looks pretty cool with the light shining through. So I'm assuming for this parental supervision, probably but if you're younger, maybe just uh, spill the inks and then maybe let mom or dad or a, or a guardian handle the fire part. Exactly. I think that would be a good idea. It could be a combined effort. It could be a lot of fun for both of them that way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, family craft time. All right. <laughs> okay. So let's get started. I'm excited. All right. Good. Okay, so first we're going to take the lid off our jar if we haven't already. And I like to start by using one of the darker colors you have in your alcohol ink. This one is called Amethyst. And then a nice deep purple. I have purple twilight. Oh, okay. Let's go with that. And take your jar and then just do a little, one little drop inside. And then take your lighter and then just light it on fire. Oh, and then you said that real casually. <laughs> and just light it on fire as you do. And now you can Wait. see. Woo! Okay. Is that, it's doing something. Okay. So you'll see a little bit of flame at first. And then it'll kind of, you'll see um, the ink will spread out a little bit. And then eventually you'll see it'll stop running. Like that? Okay, so that looks, yeah, I can see where, yeah, I can see where it went there. So that's good. Perfect. Okay. And we want to make sure that the fire is out so there's no flame going because if there's still flame going and you try to put more ink in there, you could actually run the risk of lighting this on fire and we really don't want that to happen. What do you do if it is still on fire? Just wait till it burns out. It'll burn out on its own. It's usually just a few seconds it takes for it to burn out if it's a tiny little dot, or longer if it's a larger ink blot. Yeah, and then so basically we just continue to do a little dot of our ink and then light it on fire. Oh my God, nothing like opening a flame into a vacuum. Ooh. How's it going? I think it's going okay. It, it looks like something. Okay, good. Yeah, and so it should basically, it will expand, like your blot will expand when it's lit on fire. So you should see that kind of reaction. And then also the color will intensify a little bit too. I do see that. Okay. I've got, I've, I've got a lot more real estate that I need to cover than you do. I know. <laughs> That's okay. Sometimes it's easier too to work with jars that have a larger opening, I find. I did try to create some smaller jars and yeah, it's a little more difficult to get in there, I find. So we just continue to... And just make sure to have 9-1 dialed into your phone. <laughs> so it's a lot quicker. Yeah. I haven't burnt myself on these yet, so hopefully today is not the day I do that. <laughs> but it's actually a lot of fun. Once you get used to it, it's uh, kind of addicting, actually. I'll see, I'm not too sure if you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna try to hold it up. So basically you do the little ink blot, mm -hmm. and you'll see right now it looks a little different. But as soon as you light it on fire, it changes. 
And then you can alternate colors if you like, or if you want, you can do most of it in the darker color and add the other colors later. I like working in three different shades. It seems to give it a nice look in the end. Sometimes if you have too many shades going on, it's a little busy. And it's really cool once you start adding more colors and you'll see how the different inks interact with each other. So they kind of start to blend a little bit and blend a little bit. And, and if you find that your jar starts to get a little too hot to handle, you can just set it down in your little tray and just let it cool off for a little bit. I see, that's what this is for. Yeah, because sometimes it can get a little hot. Yeah, and there's really no, really no wrong way to apply your colors. I might go in with a vision of it looking a certain way and it comes up looking a totally different way. And it's kind of kind of fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's looking cool, I think. Yeah. And once you start adding more colors, it's really, it's really fun. So Ty, what other colors do you have in yours? I, um, I have, I have sunshine yellow. This is, okay. let me do my beauty guru. Can you see Ooh. it? I can. Beautiful. And then I have, oh, and then I have sunset orange. So there was a theme to this. So the, there was twilight purple, and then there was, was there sunshine, and then this is the sunset. Okay. What were your colors? I have, this is called patina. So it's kind of a, a light green. I'm gonna try to maybe show it with a paper behind because can't really see with my black shirt here. Yeah, so patina is the greenish color. You can kind of see it's very light. I like to apply it last. And then the amethyst is the dark purple. And flamingo is the pink. Oh, I love a good pink. It's pretty fun, yeah. Little ink goes a really long way for this project. Just wait till your flame burns out completely. You'll see when it's gone, the color will stop moving. Sometimes you won't actually see the flame and it will still be burning. But as you do it, you'll you'll learn to recognize when the flame's totally done. Because you'll just see the color is completely motionless and yeah, it'll be set. And the reason why I am doing the inside of the jars for the lanterns is because I found it's really hard to find a sealant that doesn't basically change your finish. There's different types of sprays you can use. Some people will use a Mod Podge to seal it, but I find it gives it kind of a hazy look. So that's why I'm doing the inside. That way you can clean the outside of the jar and not destroy your ink at all. I think it's pretty tough on its own, like if you were to do the outside, but I mean, if any kind of cleaner came into contact with it, I think you would definitely destroy the ink. That's why we're doing the inside. Well, on the inside, it's probably a little safer to work with with a flame. Yeah, I think so too. I have seen online some people doing the outsides of the jars, but then the thing is trying to find the proper sealant that they won't change the look of it. Yeah, so I just prefer to do it this way. And some people want to know if they can use a regular candle inside of these to burn them. It probably would be okay because, I mean, we're already using flame on here already. But honestly, I don't really know for sure if it would change the look of it over time having that open flame constantly exposed so I just prefer to use a tea light. But it wouldn't be dangerous for the dried alcohol ink to come in contact with that flame again. Yeah so I don't really know what would happen if that happens so I just prefer to use a battery operated tea light just to just to be safe. So are you having fun? I am actually having fun. It's there's something really satisfying about just lighting the ink on fire and watching it change shape. No kidding. It's a lot of fun. Now that I'm kind of like getting more of the hang of it, I feel like if anyone's like a little nervous about being near the open flame, the big jar with like a wider opening is the way to go. Cause you can just yes. set it down and yeah. And it's a little, exactly. it's a little safer. Yeah. Yeah. And you just want to also make sure like when you're lighting it on fire, have your fingers outside of the lid. Don't put your thumb in front, just in case you do get a little bit of a flame coming out of the outside, because I did have that happen to me once. I put way too much ink in the bottom of my jar all at once, and then I lit it on fire. So it's basically covered in ink that was wet. And then when I lit it on fire, the flames kind of came <laughs> out. So that's why we're doing one drop at a time and lighting each on fire individually rather than as one whole piece. And the smaller the ink that you set on fire, the smaller the blot, the quicker it burns out too. The larger amount, the longer it will take to burn out. I guess on that note, patience is a virtue. Yeah. 
And right now my jar is getting a little hot because I've been burning a lot. So I'm just gonna set it down for a little bit. If you do have a pair of silicone oven mitts, that would be something that you could use too to hold on to it if you find it gets a little too hot. Yeah, it's already starting to cool down a little bit. So I feel like it's safe to handle. Yeah, so I try to recycle all of my things, but I heard lately that not all the things we think are being recycled actually are. Oh? And I never really know, like with the glass jars, yeah, they recycled the glass, but I always wonder about the lids. I'm never too positive if they recycle the lids too or how they treat them. So I kind of had a little hoarding of my glass jars in my cupboards because I thought, well, I can use them for something. And I took an alcohol ink on fire course about a year and a half ago at Wasagamine Community Arts and we did it with a picture uh, frame instead and since then I've been hooked on it so I applied it to my glass jars that I've been saving not too sure what I would do with them. Well I think this is a really creative yeah, way to spruce up old items give them new purpose. Exactly and then I just basically keep on repeating this over again alternating different colors watching them blend together until the entire surface is covered. You don't have any more clear spots left and you can apply color on top of color too and it gives it a really fun look the way it blends together. Spoiler alert if you picked a large thing like I did you're gonna be out this for a little bit. Yeah that's a pretty large jar. It is but you know. <laughs> But you can you can come back to it every once in a while and add to it. So I believe a 500 milliliter canning jar should be pretty good to start with for new beginners. I think this is an old honey jar that I had. Mine's a tea jar. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've, we've got a lot of work to do still. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, you get the idea. So I still have a bit left to do on mine. I'll hold the paper. Ooh, but you can oh, see it's already, it's already starting to look a lot nicer. It's a good way to pass the time. No kidding. And I found too, I have some metallic mixatives that I purchased to work with the alcohol inks and they really burn a lot too and they crackle and it was kind of scary the first time I used them, but they don't give a clear appearance. So I did create a candle holder using the metallics, but the problem is that the light didn't shine through as well if I applied it over the entire surface so it's good just to kind of mix it in here and there if you're wanting your piece to be see-through. We'll just use the regular alcohol inks for today. Oh we're almost done. You're almost done. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see Ty. Oh that's cool. Well, yeah. I've got so much more of it to do. Yeah but it'll be awesome like once you're totally done. Yeah. Yeah looking forward to it. <laughs> I'll let you know at midnight when I'm finally. <laughs> when you're finally done. And so it's good to every once in a while Hold it up to something like in front of the window or in front of something white, just have some paper. And then you can see if you've missed any spots. And then if you have, then you can just put more ink on those spots. Yeah, and I'm not wearing gloves, so my hands are getting a little bit dirty. So if you choose to wear gloves, that's totally up to you. But I just scrub my hands really well afterwards and the ink comes out okay. But yeah, you'll see how the different inks interact with each other. So it's basically just learn as you go. The thing I love about this, it's abstract, so you never really know what you're going to get. Kind of cool, like when you finish it, but I'll be looking at it. Looks like different kinds of images, and the last one I did, it looked like I could see a face in one of one of my uh, my blots. It was kind of cool how it turned out. I think that's the great thing about this is that you know it, you're not working with like a exact tool, so like yeah. It kind of just lets you off the hook on having to have some immaculate pre-planned outcome. It's just kind of, you know, you can just play around. It's fun, yeah. That's basically it, you're playing around. You don't have to be a master to set something on fire. Exactly, yeah. Actually, when I first learned how to do this, it was summer of 2019. And my mom and I actually signed up for the class together. And her thing is, she says how she's not creative. Well, her piece turned out way better than mine. So there you go. Even if you think you're not very creative, you could totally do this and you can really surprise yourself. Well, sometimes if you're not quote unquote creative, it usually means that you have like a better shot because you're not putting any expectations on yourself mm. you're just doing the process yeah, that makes sense you have to be in the moment not you know looking towards the finish line yeah that's kind of what this is you're just you're totally in the moment with this i mean you damn well should be because if you've got alcohol and fire look yeah the two are, are a dangerous mix um but it can be done safely <laughs> if you take the right precautions 
but definitely make sure your flame is out before you put more ink. If you want, you can also put more ink like in the rim, in the inside if you want to really finish it off. Because you'll see once you have the lid on, you can still see a little bit of clear there. I like to finish off the inside that part too, not just like the container part, the inside. My ink got a little spilly here. See, it can get quite messy. I'm with you there. So if you want to wear gloves, that's probably not a bad idea if you don't want to try to scrub it out of your skin. But I don't really like wearing gloves, so I just have really good soap. <laughs> I wish I could show on video the flame going, see if I can. Oh yeah, I guess I haven't really been. It's hard. <laughs> on my end, I've just been like, look. <laughs> Don't okay. look at what I'm doing. Can you see it? Ooh. There we go. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. And then once you're done and you have it sitting on your shelf and you're like, hmm, I think I want to add a little more color, you can always go back to it and add some more down the line, which is kind of fun. You can keep on building on it. So your your shade of purple that you have, I have the amethyst and then you have, I forget what you said it was called, but do you find a lot darker like is it more potent looking than the rest of the colors do you find or is it kind of more of a clear um, mine's pretty i would say no they're all pretty clear i find my the amethyst it becomes more clear when it gets mixed with the green shade so the patina mm -hmm. it's looking pretty fun i think i'm just going to add a little more color to the rim and and i think i'll be happy with it Remind myself not to go too quickly because that's when you can accidentally add a little more ink than you should when there's a flame still going and we don't want that to happen. No kidding. <laughs> so don't, don't brush it too much. So beginners maybe start a little small. <laughs> because the other thing too is if you start too big and what I, because what I'm finding is you get impatient and then you want to, you know, just dump yeah. a little bit more. No, just little by little is good. So I mean, I guess if you really wanted to start with a big jar, you could just don't, don't rush it. If you don't know expect, you're impatient. Yeah, as a large jar like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've been working on this for almost an hour and the small jar is almost done. So you could easily spend a few hours if it's large enough depending on how intricate you want it to be and how many cells of ink you want to have in there. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. All right. Okay, just give me a little longer. <laughs> See? Yeah. Oh, nice. Thank you. You got a decent amount done. Yeah. What? You got a decent amount done. Yeah. Although I will say that some of it has been because I've been... Uh, being a little fast and loose with our rules here. Oh. Yeah, sometimes um, I find certain bottles of ink, um, the ink comes out a lot faster than others. It's a little more free flowing and I don't really know why that is. Um, yeah. Well, I think I'm gonna put my lid on this. Show you what I have here. See if I can. Maybe I can show outside the window. I'm gonna try to maybe move my move my camera a little bit this direction. There. Ooh, can you show us with the tea light? Sure. So the kind of tea that I have, it has kind of an orangey hue to it. So I think if you can find ones that have a pure white light, that would probably look the best with the shades that I've chosen, just because there's lots of purples and greens and, and pinks. I mean, it still looks cool. With the light, you see more of the edges that were burned together. Yeah, it's pretty cool though. And the nice thing about this too, it looks neat even when it's by itself and not being used with the light in it. Let me know when you're done yours because I can always finish mine off camera, show yeah. a picture. I've actually done mine. Okay. So I can also take pictures of mine as well and then send them to you so we can see. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Thank you. Tell us yes. where we can find you on the social medias. 
Oh, okay. So if you want to check out the other kind of upcycling things I do, you can find me under Transfigured. I'm on Instagram as well as Facebook. My previous name that I called myself was Saving Base Creations, which I've changed to Transfigured just because I upcycle more than just musical instruments. Now I do jars and wine corks, all that fun stuff. On Instagram, you can find me under Transfigured by Carrie. Yeah, so if you want to check me out, you can see what other projects I have as well. And of course, if you want to check us out at wasegamingcommunityarts.com. And you can also contact us at wasegamingcommunityarts at gmail.com and send us a picture of your artwork. That would also be greatly appreciated. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook by the same name. Hope you guys have a super fun time trying this. I know I did. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you, Ty. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.